now I want to talk to you just a few minutes and share some more of the gospel from Romans chapter 3 King James Version Bible but I'm going to back up to verse 28 in verse 2 because like I said before there's too much in it to skip over it and I can't think of one person that don't need this gospel. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's again we come to you to thank you and praise you for another opportunity that you have given us to get into your word. I pray, O oh Lord, you give me a word of wisdom from you that help me explain this scripture to the understanding of others and those that are listening. And I pray, Lord, that you bless their heart and let them feel your presence and let this word sink in that we all worship you together in spirit and truth and we all can be in heaven someday. These things we ask in the lovely name of Jesus, Christ our Savior, Amen. Romans chapter 2 verse 28 and then I'm going to go continue on in chapter 3 of the great book of Romans. The verse, the verse reads 28 For it is not a Jew for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outwardly in the flesh. 29, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. In its spirit and not in the letter, whose praises is not of men, but of God. Back during the older days, during the old Mosequial law, when people was offering up, had to offer up sacrifices for sins, they were also circumcised so they wouldn't get mixed up in other tribes that it shouldn't be mixed up in. But that was God's plan in bringing forth a better covenant. Now chapter 3 and verse 1. What advantage then had the Jew or what profit is there of circumcision? much ever way cheaply, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. So, where does that leave us when we try to judge someone else? Five, but if our unrighteousness, let me go back and finish verse four. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. This is more scripture than many churchgoers today that have confessed Christ don't want to hear. Because it thinks 
that God is calling them a liar. But I say if the shoe fits, wear it. It's God's word speaking it, not my words, or not any other man's words, but God's words. As it is written, notice these words. As it is written, these four words, whatever is written from God, which he has spoken, will remain and stand forever, regardless how man tries to change it, make it sound better to suit them and their ideals. Thou that manifest, that thou mightest be justified by thy saying, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. All recognize that none of us are perfect. If we know we're not perfect, that we're still pressing on, striving to be perfect, then we will listen to what God's Word tells us and try to obey that Word to achieve what we're seeking for. that thou mightest be justified in thy saying, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Verse 5, But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Other word, if the rule, if the word proves to her unrighteousness, how righteous God is, who are we to take vengeance? Uh, it said, But if our unrighteousness commend the unrighteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man, but now listen. He made it clear. He spoke in few words as man. But now listen what he says in verse 6. God forbid. When he said God forbid, he meant just exactly that. For then, how shall God judge the world? Everything has to be brought to light. Because God is a judge. And all will be judged correctly. For God, the Lord Jesus Christ. He knows all about us. From the beginning to the end. And everything in between. Verse 7. For if the truth of God has more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? In other words, people cause him a lie, accuse him of lying. But he's saying, if because of I may have lied, if it draws somebody else to Christ, why yet am I, 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 I also judged as a sinner. If I've led some of you to Christ, is what he's saying here, why do you still judge me as being a sinner? Don't never think that people won't accuse us of many things and committing sins that we have not committed. Don't get me wrong, none of us are perfect. We do things and say things we should not say. But God will forgive us if we ask Him. Verse 8, 
and not rather as we be slanderous reported and as some affirm that we say they'll take an oath that we have said something that we have not said and we can't serve God without having an enemy and I want us to consider that and realize that's in God's Word also. And as some affirm that we say, let us do evil, that good may come, whose damnation is just. See what kind of sentence the world will put on us. And those that don't want to believe and those that don't want to hear the gospel truth as God has spoken it and allowed it to be recorded for our benefit and the one that says God never talks to them they never read his word because he is the living word and he talks to us today through his word but we've got to believe it and accepted as his word. Verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? Now listen what he said. No in no wise. For we have before proved. Both Gentiles. Jews and Gentiles. That they are all under sin. We were included, my friends. We all can sin and come short of the glory of God. The man that says he's never sinned and come short of the glory of God, he ain't nothing but a plain liar as he can be, according to God's Word. Because God's Word said we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So whose word are we going to take? Are we going to take God's word or man's word? Verse 10. Here's these four words again. As it is written. There is none righteous. No, not one. Who, uh, who of us? Which one of us? That's so good that we can brag how good we are. Or boast how good we are. But he said, there is none that doth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher or a grave. With their tongues they have you deceit. The poison of asp, which is a poisonous snake, is under their lips. False teachings that will cause people to stray and cause people to turn from God, the one that loved them. The one sent his Jared and only begotten son to die on the cross for them so that them and their sons and daughters and mothers and fathers could be saved and have eternal life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Fourteen, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. Many don't know the ways of the Lord that confess they do. Because if they knew them, they will be a lot different. They'll be seeking more of God's Word. 
they'll be reaching out to those that need, those that are suffering, and they will be sharing the gospel with their children, their moms and dads, their cousins, aunts and uncles, or whoever it may be, should be accounted as our loved ones. Because Jesus died and shed his blood for all, same as he did for only one. And his word is going to stand forever. I'm going to read a couple of more verses. Then I'll sign out. Because there's too much in this. And we don't want to skip over nothing. Because it's all so needful to every one of us. And get us a strong desire to follow the Lord. The one that knows the way. Fourteen, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the ways of peace have they not known. Now, eighteen. And the way of peace have they not known. Now, eighteen. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Can't we see that today? And the way people are doing. It's open before our eyes. And if we are a child of God, we can't help but see it. If we are saved, but don't, don't think that we are perfect because we are saved. Because we are not, we got to recognize that. To understand what he's telling us. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Nineteen. Now we know that what things soever the law saith. It said to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Now, where is that perfect man? Where is the one that says he just does not commit sin after he has been saved? I have to yet find them. Because sin dwelleth in the flesh. And in the flesh dwelleth no good thing. And our sin with our flesh will cause us to sin. Paul asked the Lord to remove the thorn from the flesh. But the Lord told Paul, My grace is sufficient. In other words, he told Paul, my grace will take care of that, will take care of you. And that satisfied Brother Paul, our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father. It's again we come to you with a thankful heart to thank you one more time for your love and for your great mercy. We thank you for this few minutes that you've given us to get in your word just a little while. And I pray, Lord, today it touches someone. I pray it you anoint every heart and every listener. I pray for those that are sick and feeble and hurting. I pray for those that's gone astray, that strayed from you that they come back. And I pray if any lost, Lord, you'll save them. And I pray, O oh Lord, today that you let us all recognize that we need you more than anything in this world, anything in this life. Because you're the only way that we can make it to heaven. To the portal of, portals of glory one day. 
And let us grow in the knowledge and understanding. And I always put you first. And then when it comes time for us to leave this world, and you call our name, we can lay down our, our old cross of self-denial and go home to be with you. These things we ask in the lovely name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that hung between the heavens and the earth and died for our sin. Amen. And thank you, Father, one more time for your love and your mercy.